1 Timothy chapter 2 verses 9 to 15 are sometimes problematic. To understand why Paul is saying what he's saying, we have to understand something of the context to which he was speaking. But to interpret it, we need to understand the context in which we live today. Jesus turned ideas of where women and men should be upside down. When Mary takes the place of a disciple at Jesus' feet and Martha gets upset, Jesus points out that Mary belongs among the male disciples in this new community. In Galatians chapter 3, Paul reminds us that in Christ there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. For men and women to be learning together in the same halls, in the same houses, was considered particularly strange. But Paul has been writing about praying for kings and those in authority, even though they're Gentiles, about living peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness, and about God who wants all people to be saved, and Christ Jesus, who gives himself as a ransom for all, shows that Paul is worried about how the church is perceived in the world around it. Language that speaks of not permitting women and them learning in full submission and quietness should set off alarm bells in modern society because it actually prevents people from speaking up against abuse and gender violence in our community. The Greek word for learn, which Paul uses when he says a woman should learn, is the root of the same word for disciples. So women are considered to be fellow disciples. Not everything scriptural is prescriptive. Sometimes it is descriptive. And so Paul describes saying, I do not permit what he would do in his letter to Timothy. But Timothy might do things differently. Passages like this remind us that the Bible is an ancient book written in a time long ago that was quite different, where things were understood and interpreted differently. We have a responsibility to interpret the scriptures into our current situations. And so we realize that there is no difference between men and women, and each can occupy the same positions, etc., in society and in the church. But the same lesson goes to all of us about humble dress and not worrying so much about appearances but instead worrying about good deeds and when it's appropriate men and women should learn disciple sometimes in silence as we listen more than we speak let's pray lord help us not to be obsessed with outward appearance and help us to think about what is inside us and how that produces good fruit Lord, we live in a world where gender violence and injustice is the norm. We pray, Lord, that especially the church would be a place where relationships are transformed. Just like you started to transform things in your ministry on earth, Lord Jesus. We ask that the church would complete the work that you began. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.